Toby. Here's Robinson here. And me, we have to watch. Citizens comments? No, no citizens Um, the reason I wanted to call this meeting is I thought it was the good opportunity for the committee to kind of come together and talk about the overages for the facade. Committee meeting. By the way, I'm sorry, I forgot to call. That's okay. And I added something to our agenda based yeah. on recent events. So, oh, that's you. Yeah, so we'll discuss your the sad stuff, but that's at the end. But because I figured we had a budget committee meeting, let's just get it. Kind of do it all together. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, from the last meeting where we added the the additional facade grants, I was I voted no because I didn't think it was proper to be you know passing as much as we were um, in excess to what the, what had been budgeted. And part of that was too is that we had just had the budget committee meetings and we had just passed the budget. And there was an opportunity I felt that they could have come forward, and I'm sure we would have agreed to add more money to that to that uh, line item based on all the great reasons that we all talked about. Um, but that didn't happen. And I just felt was I was not comfortable with the fact of passing additional amounts for the facade grant, plus knowing that there was additional grants that were going to be submitted. So I thought just to have an opportunity for us to kind of come together and talk about those grants. And I know it's up to the the committees, the facade grant committee, to review them and bring them forward, but it's up to this group whether or not we want to fund them or not. And I think it's kind of hard if we get the grant in, of course, we all want to beautify, you know, Hampshire. And every one of us wants to vote for all of them. And even when I voted against them, I loved the project. I love what they were doing, but I just didn't feel it was right to be passing things that we had not budgeted for. Um, and I know we had the ARPA funds that had come through, but the fact was, is um, those were really, I guess, for big things that were coming up. And we ended up, instead of choosing what we wanted to use them for, they went towards the side grants. And I really thought if there was excess money like that, we could, you know, use it towards the overages in, you know, all of the construction that we were doing. But um, we didn't get the choice. And so I thought if we could come together and at least talk about what everybody kind of wants to do and maybe, you know, where it's been. Um, I had asked Lori to talk to kind of bring forward, you know, the amounts that we passed in past years and, and that spent, I should say, not passed, that we spent in past years just to kind of put it all on the floor and maybe we can come up with some kind of idea moving forward because we do have one more grant that's coming to us at this particular meeting. And I'd love for us to have some kind of a plan in place for it. So that is my long introduction for it. Um, I didn't know if one of you wanted to jump in or just have Lori start with where we're at, what we've spent in the past. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So I apologize. I did not bring that reconciliation that I sent to you with with me this evening. Um, however, in total, um, the village had either budgeted seventy-five thousand or a hundred thousand dollars in or I'll do that for you. in um, expenditures for the certification committee. And in total, um, in total, we're still under. In other words, even at um, $169,000 projected to be spent at least so far this year. In total, if you look back over the course of the whole years, we're still about $17,000. Uh, uh, in total, Wonderful. underspent. So the beautification? That's out. That's I don't see this it. year, so we don't have it. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't know anything about this. You're talking, That's okay. We're $17,000 for a facade in total. Because even though for the four years, for the four years, she's yeah. going to make it. Back. Because even though we budgeted seventy five dollars or $100,000, depending on the year, we didn't spend it. Spent a couple years, most cases. The first two years, I don't think. So is that, is that, is that where she said even with the money that we've spent right now, we're $17,000 under? If you look at four not, years. Not including four years of budget and four years of spending, including the cave. Oh, including, yeah, we're still, we're still be about 17,000 under budget. 
approved. So that was money that just hadn't been spent. It was allocated and kind of sat there. Yeah, well, it doesn't sit there. It disappears. Okay. <laughs> it disappears. If it's not spent that year, then it's okay. Unless it's a capital fund with the role. Okay. Okay. So if we poured back in what we had originally, or what the board prior to me had originally thought of um, to spend, we'd still be on target spending 100K each year for the last four. And we'd still be under yes, 17, but is that with the um, upcoming? So if you were to sum each of the, the numbers here, which is not done on there, you're going to get approximately $17,000 um that includes all of the grants that we have received this year to date so we're all going to add this up just to make sure i'm not completely <laughs> well we would have to dig through minutes because in 21 21 or 22 there was a application i believe it was 22 I'm not sure. There was an application that was denied because that would have put them over budget. That would have put this committee over budget. Well, what happened several times, Toby, is these projects got delayed and the spending didn't come in the current in that fiscal year, so it carried in the next one. And then that reduced the amount that we could actually spend the following year. So some of that's because they, it was just the timing. So because just throwing uh, we went over in 20 by 12,000, then we didn't. Yeah. So that's, that's correct. Right. Okay, that's correct. And that was a timing issue. That was our um, really 19 was the first year in the program. And so 20, there was some uh, timing issues with respect to the project being completed, the expenses being um, sent to us, and then, you know, the payment being made. I think some of the payout in 21 was actually... Um, prior, prior in 20, 20. Yeah. In 20 excuse me no i don't remember who got denied was it was it christine or no she got denied well she didn't even make it to the board oh she did the the board told her didn't like it so no no, no i'm no, saying she, they never made it to the village oh no no they wanted i think the bdc or the beautification committee wanted her to contact her neighbor and cut her awning down or something that she didn't want to so she didn't get the night she didn't apply. Yeah, she withdrew her application. Yeah. yeah. But which one, who was it that got denied because of the funding? Thing? I don't think or, they, or, 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 or did, was it not, it wasn't denied, it was, it was that they had to push it to the following year, right? Exactly. Okay. Well, it obviously wasn't the first year. Because we didn't spend <clears> more than half I, of our money. Now. It had to be 20. I think I actually, it actually probably was the first year. Uh, well, um, Authorized but, first year. Again, yeah, it was, uh, it was a timing issue. Was it Roy? Was that Roy's, right? Roy's where they had to push to do part of the project one year and part of the project. He applied, um, he got, he crossed over different years. So he I'm received payments. Well, let me go get my computer. It I, it, the spreadsheets. It doesn't matter. Right it doesn't matter. Are you sure? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Well, let me just get it. It'll be one quick. Because we're going to keep sending her back there. Anyway. I, was, I, was, I was just trying to remember in my dome. I mean, that's all. I was just I was hoping that when you guys would help us. No, I don't remember. But I remember it straddled two years. Yes. I just remember at the first two years, at, June, at April 30, I was pestering the heck out of these guys. Get your get your numbers and get your yeah. receipts in so we can pay you before the end of the year. And some did and some just didn't. It was just a matter of days or weeks in some cases. So then it got kicked to the next fiscal year. Yeah, and then yes. it came out of the next year's budget. Okay. So I don't think anybody got denied. We just had the one project, like we said, that didn't make it because they didn't want to accept the change. And that didn't make it out of BDC. Right. You would have to uh, uh, look at the original language in the BDC's uh, startup. It was set up where they were given a hundred grand a year, and if it didn't get if it all didn't get spent, that too bad. It's gone. Wasn't a rollover then. No. Well, and you, no. you're right about that, but okay. we but we already violated that in 20 and we violated it in 21 because we violated it in 20 in the fact that we had a project that's straight up two budget years. And in 21 we budgeted 75,000, which was less than the hundred that we agreed to. So um, but we did that because they were over. I understand that, but I'm just saying if you're gonna look back on black and white minutes. 
we've already violated what we said we were going to do. Because originally the board was going to be really hard about projects and dates and not let them straddle the two years. I've struggled with this all day. Yeah. If I've gone over it in my head all day. We're not, we can't, we can't uh, financially do the street program because there's just not enough money to do the street program. So public works gets a crack filler and they go like gangbusters for the week because they only had it for a week. And on a day it rained, they couldn't use it. And so I'm looking at, we can't repair streets like we want to, because there's just not enough money. But here we're, we're fixing the front of these buildings, which is great, I'm all for it. But if the streets fall apart, how can they get to the buildings? So, I, and this is my struggle today, is I struggled all day long I need 30 grand for a freaking crack filler. Uh, tomorrow they're going to blacktop. They're going to blacktop as much as they can. They go get hot asphalt from the plant. Comes out of the plant 300 degrees. In two hours, it's at 100. Two and a half hours, they dump what they can't use in a pile and they go get more. A hot box is 15 to 20 grand. Hot box will keep the asphalt hot six hours so they could use the entire bit of it. So, so I'm struggling with this because in my mind, being in the streets all day, I see it. We need a crack filling machine so we can fill the cracks in some of these streets that are that big to buy time. But we're gonna keep spending money on a facade program when the real route is we need stuff in our streets or the facade ain't gonna do any good. They can't, they ain't gonna get to them. Well, they will now with the new streetscape. But so the budget, Terry committees, going to have to have a sharp pencil come budget time because those are two items that are that are in more of desperation needed than the front of a building when it comes to fixing streets. So that's how I, that's my struggle today is I know we're over budget. We're going to get another one and go over more over budget. And here I'm looking to get stuff to try and save the village money down the road. That's been my personal struggle today. What are we at right now without approving anything else further? And what, yes, yeah, because once we keep, we keep saying 69 over, well, we haven't approved the last one. I think the last one's 27,000. It's on, it's on the first page that I sent. 279. Are you talking about the cave? Yep. Yeah, 27.9. So we'll be almost 100,000. No, we'll be 69,296. Oh, that's including that's the cave. Included. That's okay. including. But if we don't do the cave, then we'll be 41,400. Did you say 41? 41,400. Ish. Okay, that's, that would be the homeridge. Correct. With the cave yard sixty-nine. With it, okay. With the cave yard sixty-nine, without the cave. Yard. And didn't Aaron say that there was another one coming besides the cave? I think he was referring to the cave. Oh, yeah. because he was expecting the cave to be on the last board meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm for whatever the committee wants. I'm just looking at being greedy. Right. Twenty-seven nine. I can go out and buy a crack filler. We could start filling cracks with it, and we can save roads and get five, ten more years out of each road that we fill. But I, I'm open. Eric? Well, I mean, I, I voted yes because I think it, it was incumbent upon the village to enforce all the codes that we've had in place for years. And I don't think any of us were even here when those codes, codes were not enforced. So we kind of neglected our part in the upkeep of the building. So I think the village kind of holds it to fund these programs to make it right for the building. But as uh, uh, Chairman Kudrecki said at, at the last meeting, once we do our part to make it right, now it's back on you, the business, because we are going to have that code enforcement now, where if your building goes into disrepair or in violation of something, then you're going to have to take care of that. That wasn't happening for... 
I mean, well, I guess how many years? Right. 20? Well, yeah, it was, lo it was longer than the former administration because it, yeah. only, it was the former, former administration that kind of and that started was, it down the path. That was a, just we, we had no code enforcement. We had no code enforcer. It was a, it, it was a different, the village was different. It was exactly. different. It, there was, it was a different time. But you look at like uh, the, the property on the end, at Washington and state. That building was allowed to get so far out of hand. And now it's, it's fixable. I don't even know. But I, I think it's incumbent on, on the village to. Well, the cave is a right. The cave is a classic example. The village had to go out black top the sidewalk because for years they were told to put gutters on their building, which is under our code, and they didn't do it. And that was when Oris Ruth was getting sued by the fire department in court because he wouldn't let them come in and inspect the building. Right. So after they went black topped it because the sidewalk had separated so much from the roof water coming and blasting all the time. She started a big nasty program for a few weeks about, you know, it's unsightly, shame on the village for doing it. When in fact, she should have been written up and forced to put gutters on her building for decades. Right. And that's what so, I'm saying. And the village didn't do that. We didn't, we didn't call her the carpet. No gutters, no sidewalk. Here's your fine. We, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of, Bridge conversations. I I believe in what Chairman Kurjeki said at the last meeting, which is, and to what you're saying is, it's like we had a hand in this. We we helped us get here, right? And you're so saying, now you're saying we as the village. We as the village, yeah. not not yeah. us at Everyone this table. I'm saying we as the village allowed this to happen for many years, and now we're to the point where we're turning that corner. To Toby's point. I understand exactly where he's coming from because there's a lot of needed tools, a lot of needed things that we could be purchasing, but we're allocating it to the street. If you look at over 475,000 that we've allocated, just in allocations to the street, plus everything that we spent downtown on the streetscape. So if you look at it, we're well over a million dollars, close to a million and a half in the last, you know, five years, which I think is great. But at some point, I think we need to scale that back. So I would say that it's important to think about what's going to happen next year, right? To, you know, you're going to go over this year, which you guys all know my feelings on it, but I'm, I'm not going to vote on it, right? You know where, where my thought process is because I don't know how many other times we're going to get where this is all tore up. But at the same time, I would say now's the time to start thinking about we've put a million and a half downtown in the last five years. Next year, maybe it's $50,000 out of the program. Maybe we take a year off. Because we just invested all this money, and then we look at bringing it back. The only problem is, is if we take a year off, there's a hard, there's a little chance that it's ever going to come back. But maybe we scale it back. I mean, granted, the facade program incorporates the whole downtown, and there's a lot of buildings that weren't touched. But we did a lot. We've done a lot downtown. I think that we've more than paid for our fair shake at this and made atone for our sins at that you know terminology. No. That depends if you ask the business that didn't apply for the program. Did we atone for that building? Not yet. Well, that's what I'm saying. Not take the program away, scale it back. But it still also is incumbent on the business Correct. to follow the code. Just because there's not a, you know, big bad village or police officer writing the ticket <clears throat> doesn't mean that the ordinance isn't there. Or that they were supposed to be following it anyway, Absolutely. because ignorance is not a reason yeah. not to. So, You're right. I mean, I understand, and we have a tone um, for some of the things that we didn't do. But you know, million and a half down there, and we've got what are we, fifteen million in projects that we'd like to be able to fund in the vi village. And I, I mean, this is just a drop in the bucket. I know that, but it's a. A precedent that we keep setting every time we go beyond what we should. If you had time to dig into these facade issues, I bet fifty percent of it is a code violation. Oh, that's a, that's without doubt. We have talked about that. We've had that discussion at the board level. We've had that yeah. almost any at the BDC and at the beautification. I mean, uh, the, the the hardware store and the rose garden are two perfect examples. There's multiple code violations that the hardware store was that was mainly there to fix. And at the Rose Garden, you know, if, if not for this program, then they could, if they didn't, they agreed to do the program, we could have went after them for all the code violations. Mm -hmm. 
is it right to be able to use, to use this program as an enforcement mechanism? I don't think that that was the intended vision of this program. I don't think anybody likes using it that way. However, I think the intent of this program was to, I just want to crack drill. I don't care what you do, to uh, draw business back into the town. Hold either way. I just want to crack Keep your business Keep here. Fix your business up. Fix your money. Yeah, we'll help you do that. And it, and it has done that. I mean, I had the opportunity this weekend to talk to a realtor about some of the open projects and things that are, I shouldn't say open projects, open buildings down there. And, you know, he said there's a lot of interest and there has been in the open buildings that we have. Um, but a lot of people kind of put the brakes on to see what happens with streetscape. Right. So they see that what's coming, they like the plans, businesses are knocking on the door, interested in seeing the different properties that are open. So we have done what you know we were supposed to do, which was to liven up the downtown and bring people back there, which is awesome just to hear that the businesses are excited about coming down. Um, but that still brings us back to okay, you know, you know, we've talked at past meetings too about the facade grant program, you know, having you know limits on it, you know, requiring you can't, you know, uh, protest your property taxes and not pay them, you know. So Right. No, BDC. So the facade program was started independent of the BDC. We keep, we keep right. We keep, yeah. So like there wasn't two. Uh, there was oh, okay. year. There was the BDC, the inception, and they had two years or three years, and then all. Then we came up with this facade program thing. So did they spend any of that hundred thousand dollars for the first two years? Yeah. There wasn't. There, there was wasn't. Pro the program didn't yeah. exist okay. prior to what you okay. see in this paper. So that was the first year that it was actually the hundred thousand. Yeah. So the BDC existed long before two years long, prior to this. Long before this program existed. This was a, a brainchild of the BDC, which you know I think it's worked out well, but the BDC existed before the And I keep going back to overall, your if you look at the sheet, we're still seventeen thousand dollars under what we had mm -hmm. budgeted for this. Program. So you approve the cave, you're 10 over. No, 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 no. still 1700. But the, the cave, cave is in the last line, probably. We're, yeah, we're still good. Okay. Like I say, we're, we're to the point now, we're too, we're too far into it to not approve the cave. But something has, the, the, the BDC needs to get corralled. They're, they're, uh, they're taking on more than what they were initially designed to do. Is there a thought? I mean, we're kind of looking at kind of evening it up. If we promised a hundred thousand a year, didn't spend it, some day, some we went over, some we didn't. If at this point then forty-one thousand, oh, I'm sorry, uh, seventeen thousand under right now. If we kind of catch back up with the one, two, three, four, five hundred thousand that should have been allocated, um, does that mean then that next year we will get? 83,000 because we're 17 over right now. Or so we're still 17 under right now. So does that mean next year we look at 117? I think I think we take a good hard look at it and see and, and really my my gut would just say right off the bat 50 grand next year and that we've scaled it back because of everything that we've done and do 50 grand next year in the budget as an item and see what happens. But I really think that we shouldn't, even if we're 17 under, and let's say another project comes at us this year, even because there's a lot more in this year, I, I would say that, that we, we shouldn't even consider it until that project, that program is rewritten. And so that it's satisfactory to both the BDC, the beautification, and, and, and the board. I think that, that it should be pushed down to BDC, shouldn't consider it until. Well, the beautification first. Thank yeah, but the BDC was, was the, uh, designed and put together before the beautification. Well, but, but the process is, is that the application goes through the beautification, they vote on it, then it goes to the BDC and then it comes to the and, and that that is the problem. The application should go before the beautification and nobody on the beautification should be voting on nothing. It should go directly to the BDC. It should go to the parent company, not a subsidiary. Well, the, the, the reason that it goes in front of the beautification committee is because they have more time to work through some of the 
facade type stuff and build a small well takes a lot of time and effort to go through every single one of the applications meets with the business owner as they're forming the application before the application even goes in. People on the BBC don't have time. I, I understand what you're getting at, but if we cut the beautification out of the process, we're losing the cohesiveness that Bill has designed downtown. I mean, and that group kind of becomes a feeder to the BDC too. Like they have the time to mess with, like go, walking up and down the street. Okay, this type of roof would look good, or this color siding and stuff would match, or have you thought about this, or this is what the building used to look like. And so a lot of that, I, I don't want to call it minutia, but that's the only term that comes to mind. A lot of that minutia has worked out before it even gets to the BDC. And, and I like that. I think it, at the B, when it gets to BDC level, then it should be. On BDC to say, okay, you like your program or you like what you want to do here, but it's going to have to wait until next fiscal year to, to get in. So, but so, so before it comes to the village board, because then it puts us in that position. Like, so, we've clearly told them in the past, based on the fact that the structure has always been that we the board has been the keeper of the money. Are you suggesting that the BDC kind of keep a tab, uh, keep tabs on the money and say and kind of watch it and say before it gets before it even comes up to the board to keep tabs on. Right. Absolutely. By the time it gets yes. to us, well, are you going to have a business sitting yeah. right there and say, no? Yeah. I, no. So they should keep a tab on their, if they're budgeted $100,000, they should over at 80. Sorry, you're going to have to wait till next year. And that's and that's fair. I mean, that's something that they'd be willing to do as long as they're clear cut expectation. Yeah. Because I think there was a lot of. We have done that in the past. We've told people to wait till the next year. But there was a lot of confusion as to whose responsibility and which board's responsibility that step belong to. So if it's the budget committee's expectation of this is the money that you have to get, for forgive my terminology, yep. this is the money that you have to play with. If you're getting close, you know, then it's on you to, to work with that business to understand it. The planning and all that can happen prior to it gets to the BDC, but the BDC is going to have to be the one telling no, not to worry. Right. Or even that beautification, like, hey, I want I want to improve my building. Maybe somebody at beautification says, hey, we don't have enough money this year. We're going to have to wait until next year. We can start walking through the process. But you're going to have to wait till next fiscal year to get this in. I think I think that happened before they get too far into it, as as Toby's saying. Because once you get go through what Bill does with them, and then go through all the BDC work. When it comes to when it comes to the board, you're you're too deep into it. What are you gonna you gonna look a business owner in the eye and tell them and, no. and, and tell them no? You look like a schmuck. Yeah. I mean the part, but the other part of it is is that we push it back on them, which I know that they'd be open up to, to managing Bill and Brian Bull. You know they kind of. That might change the way that they evaluate a project too. You know, they consider right now they both can, both of those boards consider it on the merits of the project, and that's well and fine. And then they leave it up to us to decide whether to fund it. Now here we are. If they had an opportunity to understand the funding side of it, or, or maybe that would change the percentage. Look, if they get a hundred thousand dollars a year, they can spend it however they want to spend it. Mm -hmm. No, what I'm saying is, is rather than recommending everything up at 75, maybe projects start to. There's not a lot of skin in the game at 75 percent for right. the business owner, and they should share the responsibility that they're building. It's most of the projects that come to the change. village. Yeah. Most of the projects that come to the village board have been recommended at that full 75 percent funding level, no matter what it is. Right. I mean, I think that this is a good conversation. I think that. I mean, we don't need that. There's no like vote at the board level that needs to happen for this to take effect either, you know, because it doesn't, it's not changing anything. It's a matter of this is what we'd like you to do moving forward. And, you know, all things considered, but really, I'm, I'm you know, filling, filling cracks in the roads, that is really part of the beautification. <laughs> I know. Especially when you're driving it. it. He was bragging about all this nice crack fill over on Rowell Road. We said, yeah, but it, it just doesn't look like that much. It should all be black. And you can see it over it now. Yeah. That's good beautification to start. Yeah. But you mentioned earlier, cut it down to 50 a year. You take out two of these projects. Yeah. But these are also projects that were approved at 75%. If, oh, we're, yeah. if we're still 17 under, why can't we just stick to the original 100? And tell the BDC anything over a hundred thousand, you will not come to this board. With and it. they didn't in the past. Honestly, yeah. can I just add one Please. thought? I've been listening. Um, first of all, this board twice voted to approve more than what the BDC recommended this year, twice, mm -hmm. um, because people came before you, and one of them cried. <laughs> um, the other one didn't. But uh, anyway, 
So, but I, I feel like this is a very unusual year. This was the year Streetscape had. And Streetscape is, you know, it's been out there for a long time. For the Lori, I guess you're the only new one since that happened. But, you know, there were three big projects we wanted to do, but that's the only thing we could do with the money that the, the, the CDBG program allowed. Um, and then, of course, it came in so high because of all the supply chain stuff. But it finally happened. And there's a lot of enthusiasm downtown. So people came forward with the and, and you know, who, who could predict that after 20 years, the Azizis would finally retire and complete the, you know, kind of our cornerstone in downtown, not only in, not only in business and bringing people down in the mornings, but also that that wall is probably the biggest, you know, future mural or potential, um, ice, it's an eyesore now, but it's a future, you know, really great looking piece. And I've sat through all these meetings with the BDC when they talk about, and the beautification committee, where they talk about all the details of these things and really get into it. And it was this year, though, when the board was actually giving signals back to the BDC by approving the first one at higher than they recommended, I think, to approve the second one at 75%. In fact, I sat here when the BDC said, well, you know, this is the right thing to do. Yeah, it's over budget, but let the board decide that. And Aaron was sitting right here saying, yeah, that's okay. And I think I probably agree to that, too, because it is the board's ultimate decision. Um, but I feel like this was the year to do it because, and I didn't even know until Lori checked the numbers a week ago that we had actually underspent in previous years. I mean, I remembered that we had it, not how much. I just feel like there was a lot of, I don't want to call it pressure on you, but there was a lot of good, there were a lot of good reasons why I think you voted to go over the budget. We didn't recommend it just for the record. Staff did not recommend it. And we didn't know when we did the budget that the board was going to do that. In fact, in previous years, the board had never done it. Uh, well, I guess in one year we did, but. I didn't remember that to be honest. Um, but I do feel like you're getting a lot, we're getting a lot of return on that investment. Um, not only is this coming back to some property taxes eventually, uh, but there's a lot of enthusiasm downtown. And you heard it Laura Saturday. Um, there's the, the buildings are listed now. The doctor's office on North State is now listed for sale. Um, so I think we're starting to see some real action downtown. And I just remember the very first meeting I had with the village before I was even on the job was over at Keep getting the banks confused. Resource bank, right? Mm -hmm. uh, resource bank. We had a. It was a downtown. Were you there, Mike? It was the introduction to the Main Street program. Yeah, the Main where we invited program. the business and the, and everybody and said, "Hey, what do you want to see downtown?" Yeah, it was one of those private meetings that we had behind the scenes where nobody was involved. And we keep reading about on Facebook. Yeah, there, there were probably fifty people there at the bank, yeah. and they were all very enthusiastic. Yeah. Enthusiastic to put together. She presented her Main Street program. There's a lot of enthusiasm yeah. for downtown. And I, I just feel like over the last two and a half years, a lot of those things have just happened. It's, it's really come to fruition. I agree. And you know what? Anybody that's looking open to any kind of a business, whether it's a bakery or coffee, they're going to drive through here. They're going to see two thirds of these buildings done. They're going to see a new streetscape. They're going to see the eyesore down there that eventually will be nice. And uh, um, yeah, that, that whole thing is, is uh, uh, spurned people to get interested, excited. I think you see it at all these festival type things we have now. You see that whatever was over by uh, Copper Barrel in the Cave a couple of months ago. I don't even know what that one was called. Street Dance. Yeah. I mean, you can see that summer fest that, that was going on last week happening right right out there. Mm -hmm. Rosemary Kessie Day. I mean, it, people are excited about it. So we have the momentum here going. I mean, I look at this sheet and that first one in fiscal year 19, correct me if I'm wrong, was Copper Barrel and look what that's brought to this town. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that building was transformed. Yeah. And it's... I think our two things would be no, to send that. something back to the BDC. You got a hundred grand, spend it however you want to spend it. Don't come to the board with anything over unless it's like 103 or 104. Well, we're at 17 left for this year. I think we need to cut it off. So as you said, but well, we're too deep into the cave. But the cave. Um, I just wanted to, to point out that every time we underspend, if you if the intention is to roll over the funds plus the hundred thousand dollars, we should always budget in that way. Okay. So, and it has not been done that way. Right. Um, you know, Laura asked for this list and asked where we were at over time. Um, but yeah. where does it go? So, where did it go? And so when it's where'd that fifty-one-six go? 
So when it's when it's underspent like that, um, it it goes away essentially. Any any amounts that um, you know in total that the general fund doesn't spend goes into fund balance. And um, so you'd have to look. I mean, this is just a snapshot on one line item. You have right. to look at the overall year. I think it's so. Say. But if it, it, it's a, underspent, it goes into fund balance. Uh, yeah. Okay. And is it which could be used for the next year. So yes. You just but then have it to should put be. It back it in be that line yes. Item. Exactly. It should be so, rebudgeted. Yeah. So it doesn't go. It, it doesn't go away. It doesn't disappear. Correct. That's right. that's the part that it it comes out of that line so item. Back, back into the, the pot. Back into the pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I for whatever you prefer, guys I would prefer okay. if you guys use that terminology or something to that effect because there's a lot of board members that have come and gone that automatically assume that the money just disappeared. Yes, no, yeah. <laughs> so it's like some magic thing that happens, and yeah. so while it, it disappears, I feel the trail it's reflected in the following year for whatever you decide to disappear. <laughs> <year. laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so technically, we don't have 17,000 surplus because. The money disappeared. Right. It was reallocated. <laughs> um, it was reallocated. It was reallocated. Yeah, like the fund balance. Just, it was, yeah. So, I mean, technically now, I mean, if we choose then to approve the, the CAVE coming forward, that is going to then take additional money out of the general fund, or we said it was going to come out of ARPA? So, yes, we're going to use it, um, ARPA funds for this, because um, our overall budget for the general fund is um, a surplus of like $138. So there's not 130, you know, like we're way over that. Um, but yes, we will be using ARPA funds, which are not budgeted until they're spent. So, so 70, I think it was 69,300, 69,300 of our ARPA funds then would go towards the beautification committee. I'm sorry, the facade grant. Correct. It's called village beautification in the budget. Okay. So how much does that leave in the ARPA funds? $11,600. I could buy the pail of the rubber for the crack then. <laughs> and when does the ARPA? I mean, we spent we another year at least to spend ARPA. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And then. And technically, we're, spending, I, I, technically we're spending our money on so we spend. Yes. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is match our revenues with our expenses. And as far as using ARPA funds, um, so there will be eleven thousand six hundred dollars available, assuming we don't have other unforeseen things like in streetscape. And I just want to say that some of my numbers are not super firm. So, like, we have estimates on the clock, and you know, but I, I don't know. Do you know? Did Dave order the right LED kit, or you know, are we going to have to pay a little You're bit more? You're never going to hit it. We just. You're never going to hit it on target. You get close, but you'll never hit it. Exactly. So, I mean, I really wouldn't suggest that we spend anything, any more ARPA funds, at least for the time being, until we get some of these projects completed so that we know if we have to, you know, use them again. So that's the cave money is coming out of ARPA. Right. So, uh, so with with a with eleven thousand six hundred dollars still available, so I'm okay. still okay. So cons yeah. considering, I wouldn't say you know like okay, ARPA. we get a thirty thousand dollar application. It would not come from ARPA. If, if you wanted to, um, you know, entertain another facade application for thirty thousand dollars, let's as an example, I would say that would be if if it were if it were granted, it would be a known use of reserves because. I just wouldn't spend any more ARPA mon monies because we said we were going to use ARPA on streetscape, the north-south water connection, um, and and we used it on the red parking lot. So those were the items that, you know, the first two were the first two that we really identified to use the 850 plus $1,000. Can we just approve this and tell the BDC no more this year? Well, no I, more I, I, would no. Say, I would say no more this year, number one, and no more... No more even reviewing the applications until we redo the program. Until we go back. Yeah, they have to tell it. They have to tell the business owner Agreed. we're out of money. You know, not till next year. I mean, and I think at this point they can see where the money went. Yeah. You know, and so I think that it. Sorry, it's just closed this year. And if there's a, I, I can't think of a project, but if there's something that comes, if there's a business that comes to us and says, "Hey, I really would like to do this." Or, you know, and they try to 
use it as an opportunity to say, okay, if you know we don't do this, we're gonna, you know, they're still kind of gonna close. No, they can't do it. We have to we have to hold firm. Yeah. Like Lori had mentioned, we've done more than our fair share for these people to bring up uh, to bring their buildings up to code when they should have spent money 100% out of their pocket to bring it up to code. So we've done more than our fair share. Uh, if you don't have money in your account, stop writing checks. Oh, Something Springfield will never get, but just wanted to have that conversation. Well, Chair, we can't, we can't have, have a business hold this time. He, he estimates we about 50% of the buildings that can apply for this have already applied. That's what he said, I think. That's, yeah. So we still have half of the buildings that haven't. Yeah, so. Yeah, but you know what, those, those, I mean, the program goes all the way down the state, you know, and that strip mall on the other side, I mean, that's a heck of a lot newer. We're not going to get this whole thing done in two years. It's going to be oh, a 10, no, no, but the, but the, the age of the buildings, too, are also something to think about, too, like the, where the pharmacy is and that other building, big, those are a lot newer than does it mean down here. You're not going to, if you own that building, you're not going to dump that money into it right now. It's, Maybe you would. I don't know. No business That's what I'm saying. I mean, I can't imagine that there's going to be a lot of applications coming from down there. Probably not. Well, so those business owners that know for five years there's $100,000 on the table sure. and chose not to. Right. right. In five years. It's not like, you know, we ran out of money one year. It was, they had the opportunity but, to, to seek it and they chose not to. I so there's the cave. They're waiting until year five. And exactly, and but their application is in right there, now. There but, isn't, but yeah. um, block, I don't remember shift over, over blocks. Was that four years ago? Uh, three or three, three or something. Oh, okay. They but, invested a lot. But, but they also money. invested, yeah. To, they to invested a ton. Yes, yes. So, I mean, you look at. I was shocked that they applied. Copper Barrel, New, Rose Garden. That happened because they closed, and the current owner wants to bring it up to. By the way, current owners also spend, they're going to spend a lot of money inside that. Right, right. But these are all, the cave kind of went through some new leadership issues. So these aren't all like, they've been sitting around for five years just kind of waiting, like, should I do this? Should I? These are all like new things that this this year, you look at the ones, you look at the ones last year, the, the hair salon, new. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the only the dog stickler with that BDC. If I own a business downtown, I can apply for a beautification grant of a SAG grant. I get it. I redo the building. I can sell it the next day. I can sell it before the facade is done. Yeah. And I have a problem. But if you're going to sell it, is there a way that we can put that in? Do we have any grounds? See, we benefit. We, we do. I just I know. And I understand your point. You sell so that if a new business comes in. I don't know. I get it. Then you can't tie the hands of a business owner and tell them you can't sell. No, but we could. But we can tell. Fixing it. But no, no. But the question is kind of productive. But the question that I have though are objectives. The villages. If the if the person were to sell now that he's got us down this right. If the person were to sell, sorry, it benefits the village, right? I get that right. But we also have in our program that they can't protest their property taxes. That was to the former owner. Now the new guy takes over. He didn't sign that agreement. He just bought the building. Well, it depends on how we write the contract. The contract could be written that it survives that. Well, and that's what I, I guess it it's good that he, firm he that to be. Well, no, well, because he brought it up. I want it to be as firm as concrete. <laughs> because any, any business in town can never. Uh, <laughs> Never protest your tax <laughs> ever. Right, I'll write it for you. <laughs> no, I, I, I would never, never thought of that. And I would, I would guarantee you when that clause was written into that into the cage, that cage not cage not going to sell ever. But I'm saying, but that they were to sell the next the next that's owners could pro, but even with that being in the contract, no, they could protest the contract. No, that's for that's for staff to take care. No, of. No, but we're talking about rewriting the program. So let's figure out a way to make it so it's. You know, I don't want to rewrite the program. I just want the BDC to be told they got a hundred dollar a year, and anything over that don't come to us. You know, Josh has rewritten the program twice. I think people just need to follow the rules. They're, the rules are clear. Yeah. 
at all three levels, the beautification, the BDC, and the sport. Maybe we need Josh to give us a, a give each one of the class, uh, each one of the boards a class on this is the program. Here are the rules. Don't go outside of the rules. Um bit of a big stick and beat all of us. I don't know if we I mean, do we need a motion coming out of here? I, I I've written down three things that we kind of seems like we all kind of agreed to. Um, the first one is no more money this year after the existing application or the pending application stuff. So no more money this year, for, uh, this uh, fiscal year. Uh, two is no more applications um, considered until they until BDC re reviews and redoes the application itself. The, the, the facade types, program. The facade program. You have to redo oh. the program. No, we're just kind of clean it up. Yes. Do a little housekeeping. Yeah. Review and revise. Like their rules. Right? Yes. And the third one is that um, we put forth a recommendation then to the BDC that it's a hard hundred thousand. And anything else? I mean, as, as you kind of said, no, something's a hundred and three. You know, it's going to bring it over three thousand. That's you know. It's almost pennies when you're talking about three hundred or hundred thousand. But if something's going to be one hundred fifteen thousand, you know, bring it to that. We've said you know, how how knowledgeable are all the future applicants that about this program? Do you know? Well, so that's what Bill at the beautification does a really good job of explaining the ins and outs of the program, and and it really tries to keep tab on that stuff. But up until this point, they were never responsible. Do we have? Do we have get that? Do we have like a, a uh, piece of paper or a trifold uh, on the facade program, what it is and what it entails with the meeting? It's a very thorough application that explains all this. It just doesn't have any pretty pictures. I guess, I guess my question is, uh, like what else do they need? If you're the farm smart the rules, rules, if you're smart enough to run a business, business and follow the rules. So how familiar are the 50% of the remaining businesses that we have this program? Um, the, the chamber the chamber meets with businesses on the regular and and we try that we try they try now even like previous leadership of the chamber would only like stay connected to chamber members right you remember that whole yes. debacle yes they're pretty they're pretty open and willing to have those conversations and then Jay does a pretty good job when the business calls and asks about different uh, opportunities I mean what like, what we've learned is we, we have a hundred thousand dollars, a hard hundred thousand dollars to stop. Do these businesses know like the quicker you get your application, the more likely are you, you are to get it this year? I mean, maybe that's, they maybe they need to know that's that. That's typically what we've told people in the past. I think that's evolved because the first couple of years it didn't, and they right. come in later in the year right. and it's so spent in the year to prove so yeah. they carry it over. But this this time around we probably did a better job of getting it out there. And we also had people that we were interested. Now the gate came up late. I didn't know they were even interested. Uh, the Rose Garden, I mean, we were all just praying that he would be willing to do something. But then the right, of the right. bad right. rumors going around about it. Um, so, but like whatever the next, I don't even want to guess what the next building is going to be. Like, hey, you know, we got $100,000. You get your application. Well, out. I would as assume that that can, business. Or you might not get it. I assume that business would contact either staff or the BDC to get the parameters of what the facade program is. I would have just assumed there, 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 there are very there are very few businesses in this town. In fact, I can only think of one that remains in a bay. Maybe two in this whole town. The rest of the business owners talk. They talk with the realtors, they talk to other businesses, okay. they talk to the Bill, they do know. They talk to the chamber. There's only one or two businesses right here on state that live inside the bank. Okay. And when no businesses come to us where there's a new business looking in town, I tell them about the program. We have a facade program. It's spent for this year. But come May 1st next year, have your application ready to go. I've said that more than once. Okay. And and it's easy to say. Developers, sorry, we don't have any money this year, but if, if you go oh, yeah. in there, developers know, developers talk, the real estate agents talk. Okay. I mean, like to, to Toby's point, our reputation's out there. Yeah. You know. Plus, if you see, I mean, you drive down and wow, some reputation. really new buildings and some mm -hmm. things. And no more kicking the can down the road. It's like been in the newsletter. To. We've had it there. And, and every time we discuss this, you know, at a board meeting, it's video, right. you know, and it's in our minutes and stuff. Right. So there's, I mean, this is about, video right, now. right. So transparency, I mean, it's, it's out there. It's nothing. Okay. It's not a secret. No, though. I just want it to be, Hey, if, if you want to design, if you want to design a trifle, you could do that. No, I don't. I don't. 
Kobe I'm with this winner. <laughs> Right. I'm, I'm a little busy right Crab now. Crab seal. Crab seal. Come on. Chickens doesn't show up at your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in a in a in a eight piece bucket. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Have a rooster head in your bed. So yes, your three points are are uh, acceptable. Okay. I, but I don't. Yes. I don't necessarily think that you, you do it however you want. If you want to make. She is going to do it however she wants. You make a recommendation Why? to who I. Okay, so then it would be a rec well recommendation due to the full board, recommendation to um we're, well, we're not recommending the board do anything. So it's been that's the decision of the um the budget committee that moving forward because I mean it doesn't tie us to money. I mean, so I'll I'll make year. I'll make the motion for the three bullet points uh that you stated. I would second that if we then are you at you were in support of in my, support my, can, I, of. can I interject just a minute because I don't think this committee can really direct the BDC to do anything. If no. you really want to take an action, you, you need to take it to the village board. So uh, well, I, well it'd be our, our so my, my motion would be to recommend to the village board those three points. those three points. Or you could direct staff to communicate to the BDC that there will not be no funds in the budget. Can I, can I just interject since we're interjecting? I'm Absolutely. Sorry. Just Everybody else a couple is. seconds. So maybe uh, I just want to throw out there, it might be a good idea to, rather than to quote the 100,000 in case we can drop it down to 50, like Mike suggested for next year, that you stay within the budget parameters. Okay. So, and if they accepted applications from, let's say, May 1 to May 31 and provided those guidelines, then if they had one application or they had 15 applications on May 1, we will have passed our budget and they would know how much they have to spend to allocate over all those applications. Any application received after May 31st would be accepted as and, and reviewed um, if funds were still available. And we talked about that for a long time. We've talked about that multiple years about setting timelines and dates and all that kind of stuff. And, and everybody has been vehemently against it because. And I'm not suggesting you exclude. I'm just saying if after the after the given time frame, whatever it is, if there still are funds available, we'll continue to accept and review applications. I think we were against that because we wanted people to fix up their building whenever they had the chance to do it. So if you're going to send your application in December, absolutely. Listen, remember all the frustration we went through when the state announced what, $300 million, I don't know how much to rebuild Illinois was. And mm -hmm. Here's all these programs coming out, but you have to have your, your application by June 30th. It'll be reviewed and approved. Yeah. A project came in a week after the deadline. Forget it. I mean, that's that's the way the state does things. I don't think we should do it. So that, I mean, we, we should have a lot more flexibility, we should, and we should be disciplined enough that we can have flexibility and still not go over budget. I think well, that's why I think that, that we should we should somehow get to the BDC that you have a hundred thousand to spend, uh, or a really. hard budget, whatever. Yeah, yeah, hard, yeah. and then you know if the, they know that you know three three other ones are going to submit, so they can either cut down the the current ones that are asking to hold off on money. They can hold off the the few until the rest of them submit. They got time to go to the ones that haven't submitted and say, you better hurry up and submit it. You're not going to get nothing. I think like just what Jay said. Honestly, I'm not concerned about the BDC. They will take this direction very clearly, very ser seriously. They can, I mean, and I'm just throwing this out as a question too. I mean, we can still, um, or they can still go through the process and get everything approved. If they do the work, I mean, once it's approved from that end, they can do the work. We haven't passed it yet, but. You can't well, retroactively do it for the next year no, or I, give them, like, let's just say 17000 is left. That's all we can give. But, you know, but then it goes into another budget. Well, there's there. nothing left this year. You're already yeah, 60 million right. over budget. I'm just, just using it as a 17000 that, you know, we still have money. Let's just say 60000 yeah, we did that last year. I think last year was the first year that we actually sat here and cut back some of them because they didn't have enough money in the budget. Okay. Um, and this year, everything just changed because... A, we had streetscape and all this enthusiasm. B, the Rose Garden closed after 20 years, 30 years, I guess. And C, we had our money out there, so it just made it easy. If they did the work, the business, and then came back in fiscal year 24 with the bills? Right now, the rule, the, the program was written, so it's a but for. So if it wasn't for our money, the project would not go through. Okay. We did that because okay. we didn't okay. want 
Okay, well, no, that's fine. Point, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, there's nothing yeah. that says you couldn't change that, but I, I wouldn't. No, no, I, I like that, but I just wanted so to. So maybe we should just make a recommendation for staff to do this. Well, I mean, we, we can handle this with the BDC and we can make sure you don't go over budget. I, I, mean, I can't keep you guys from voting to go over yep. budget, which is what's happened. Um, but we can certainly get the BDC to go no back to where they were. Well, I, you have a motion on the table in a second. So you either have to vote on it or withdraw it. But wait, hold on, Ben, because we changed it too. It's That's so what I'm saying. To recommend to the village staff, because it was board and staff. So, but what we're saying is then it would be a recommendation. So it's Toby's why motion. Why don't you withdraw that motion? To start over? Yeah, I'll, I'll withdraw it. Okay, then I would entertain a motion uh, to recommend to the village staff in support of the following three points. Uh, one, uh, no more money this year. Uh, following the existing application under consideration. Two, uh, no more applications from the BDC for the facade grant till um, the facade program, or till we, they redo the application itself um, and the facade program rules. And three, a recommendation to the BDC that it is a hard budget number whatever is passed by May 1st, that's a hard number and it's not to go over. Is there a motion? I've entertained it. Somebody like to move forward. Okay. So, but you have to repeat Eric's, it word for word when you make it. Yeah, no. So Eric's make it. Oh, second. Toby second. Any other, any further discussion on that? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Or do we have to do each person? Okay. All right. There's no money and there's no rules. Passed unanimously. All right. Before we move on to the next, just we did not have um, minutes in the agenda, so we can't approve those in there. So we'll have to kick that to the next meeting. Um, to approve this minutes and the minutes from the last one. I just wanted to get that. On uh, on the record, it was May or March tenth. You were here. No, and but the the minutes have been written. Okay. To put, um, Years ago, you had angry trustees mad because the minutes weren't turned in, and they didn't get their twenty-five dollars. Oh, I had an angry George Cross gave me home. Okay. Really? Wow. So they didn't get the twenty-five bucks, so they got minutes. Yeah, that was the rule. It was the meeting. The meeting was the night before, and I didn't have the minutes done by eight o'clock the next day. And and he didn't, and he was short of twenty five dollars on his paycheck, and he was pissed. He used to get mad at me. I used to. I spent two hours watching that damn tape and writing minutes. Did you write the minutes? Because it needed to be done, and I volunteered. You're a nice person. Voluntold. Okay, what else? All right, uh, moving then to the uh, number five, then the police chief recruitment process and costs. Uh, I'd like to defer then to our mayor to put this sure. on the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, as you know, Chief Thompson submitted his uh, retirement papers uh, for September 9th. Um, I don't want to get into a whole lot of the minutia about. The reasonings, I and mean, you guys are all familiar with the with the current state, and you we are we are all familiar with where we are. My thought process is, as I detailed in the email to the village board last week, I'd like to bring in an interim police chief from the outside to help us with an evaluation of the department, and um, I'd like to um, have that person on staff to kind of tell us some of the things we're achieving in and some of the things we're missing the missing the boat on if we are and just kind of have an independent set of eyes in the police department to kind of help us through this transition because it's been pretty substantial amount of years since we've had to had the opportunity to bring in a new police chief and policing has changed and it's been a pretty hot button topic and so i want to be sure that we don't end up in the news for the wrong reasons at some point um that being said um uh, we spoke with two companies this week. Uh, one's the Illinois Chiefs of Police Association, and then another one's called Gov HR. Okay, and so here's, I just kind of want your thought process and just so that we, because what we're going to do is we're going to have a deeper conversation at our next board meeting. 
But being that this is an unbudgeted expense, I wanted to bring it to the budget committee. So to give you guys an idea of what we're looking at. So we're looking at doing a contract with an individual. Whether, there's two ways we could do it. With GovHR, it's a contract between us and them. If we do Illinois Chiefs of Police, it's between us and the individual. And then we have to cut a check to the Chiefs of Police Association for, for a, like a finder's fee because they're like a, they're like a headhunter. So they get a piece of money. So with the Illinois Chiefs of Police, it's 40%. With GovHR, with GovHR, it's 10. Other way around. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was the other way around. For the, for the, um, for the interim position, it's 10% well, okay. uh, to the police chiefs and 40% to GovHR. I like the 10%. <laughs> what do you mean 10%? 10 so, it's like, it's, it's yeah. A, yeah, it's just that it's a headhunters type thing. So okay. like, like they're like they're acting as if the, as the recruiter. So regardless, regardless of that, we're looking at between seven and nine thousand dollars a month for this individual. Is typically what going rate is. It's really not outlandish considering what we pay our, pay our police chief now. This is yeah. Well, because these are guys at the end of their career, they've retired typically, right. and they're coming out of retirement to help you out. Okay. And so that's so that's what we're going to be looking at. And I don't want to commit to any long. I don't want to commit to say it's only going to be three months of this. Or six months of this. I'm thinking it's going to be no more than six. I have say. you typically have you looked into this? Typically, when an interim chief is hired, he winds up becoming the chief. That's not so. There's two there's two pieces of this. There, we, I would like somebody that comes in to help us through this transition. I would also. This is part two. We hired a village administrator once upon a time on our own and it didn't work out very well. And he spent a very limited period of time with us because I, I feel like we didn't know the right questions to ask. And that was proven when we were interviewing for Jay and we got all the way through the process. And it was the second time, the second time for the second round of interviews and the questions. And the board stepped back and said, you know, maybe we should bring in the consultant to help us through the, end, the, the contract negotiations, the background checks. What questions should we be asking? What, you know, what, what are we missing here? And that gentleman can really help bring it through the fishing the finish line if you guys remember i mean then you were not here but it, he was he was invaluable to us because he helped lead the interview and that kind of stuff as we look at the role of chief of police now i feel that doing this on our own we're gonna we have the potential to end up right where we were with one of our former administrators or we get all the way through the process and say there was something that we're missing I've looked into, I've made several contacts with several um, different municipalities about this and about the companies, right? Um, GovHR seems to be one of the leaders in the field. They are a little bit more expensive. So for like a full search would be about $23,000 to do a search. That's really, if you remember what, if you remember what we paid, if you remember what we paid the consultant, you know, for, for hiring Jay, I mean, it's it's well in line and Gov HR also gives a one year guarantee. So if something happens, if something happens with our hire, they would redo the whole search and stuff. For so do they handle the whole process removing us or do they send someone like Ken came out and worked with us? No, so that's that's what that's the big thing is I want and they they are even down to they would even interview police officers in, in the department. They would. They would handle we all would of it. We would not be involved. They would interview you as well. They would interview oh, us. Okay. They would interview us to see what we wanted. They would do it individually. They'd interview staff. They would interview police officers about the current climate and, you know, different things that, you know, from their experience and that kind of stuff. I mean, the, the way that this would work is in, in many communities is the mayor finds a person recommends them to the board and you just appoint them. Right. I don't want to mess this up. No. So they handle all of the. It would, then they bring us the candidate. Here's your guy, or well, candidate. Here's your candidate, and then we would do a final round of interviews with with the candidates from the consultant. Correct. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I I am I am 100 million percent that we need to hire a new police chief from within. We've got plenty of cops, plenty of new guys, all different. Uh, walks like uh, putting in a, uh, somebody that's retired as a police chief interim. I agree 100%. We need an outsider to stay neutral to 
to look over everything. They'll give you the best insight of what's going on, what is done right, what isn't being done right, because uh, we're back in the Stone Age. It's naturally smart. I still think you, you've got it. I mean, you've, if you're opening it up and asking your a consultant to help you, limiting it to the department is not the right way to go. No, no, no. no. For an uh, interim police chief. Oh, for interim. I, I, I don't want to say that. I, I, I will say this because I thought long and long and hard about it. I am not opposed to somebody internal taking the job at the end of it. If that's what comes out of all of it. If that's what comes out of it and the cream rises at the top and there's somebody that's internal that the board feels would, would be best to leave the department, and, and I'm good with it, but I'm not going to say that it has to only be internal. And the reason I say that is 40 years on construction, I've worked on a lot of crews. I've run a lot of multi-million dollar jobs. I've seen them bring in outside people that were absolutely not qualified and they'd screw things up. And I'd see them promote people uh, that worked their butts off and gave their soul to the place that deserved it. And I think we have enough people in there that knew coming in that the chief was going to go sooner or later that that at least deserve a shot. I think they should be able to apply for it. I mean, it's an interim position for consideration. No, no, interim is just somebody that's no, going to no, take I'm over not, and run it I'm until we decide. I'm not, I'm unwilling to, and then I don't mean to be a jerk about it. I'm unwilling to, to consider somebody to be internal for the interim. Oh, I agree. That's gonna. I would really prefer if the board backs me on this because because I would like somebody from the outside, and that's it. At the outside the guy is gonna be neutral. He's gonna come in at the end with, okay. at the end of with the his day. own uh, aspect and, and look of what's going on, what needs to be done, what isn't being done. Where an internal guy, if there's things that are being done that he's comfortable with, he's gonna push those. Where an outsider is gonna look from the outside in. He's also okay. in a position where this I'm only doing this for six months. I'm going to tell you everything. Right. Okay. No, I, I, I agree with that. that. I mean, so, and then at the end of the day, to your point, Toby, if somebody, like, as we as we get through this process, like, we don't have to commit to doing the search part of it now. Really, what we need to do is we need to commit to doing the interim part. Really, it'd be nice if we could do one-on-one, -on -one, but at the end of the day, we can hire an interim, come up with a set of objectives, work with, you know, work with the staff and try to evaluate the PD. And see where we are in a few months and then decide when we want to conduct the search but at the same time it would be nice to kind of do all of it at the same time if if, if Jay, you're looking I, I would just be reluctant to be under an interim for very long unless he was really he or she was being considered for the job long term because you're not going to it's going to take somebody two to three months max i think to really understand what's going on to get you the input you're looking for mike um, and then I think we need, we need to settle down and get something serious that's in here. So if we, if, existing or if we go to one of these firms and say we're looking for an interim six months max, that guy is going to get, or girl, lady, is going to get hired knowing that that job is going to be for six months max and that's it. At, at the end of six months, they're gone. Correct. Like Mike, I think you told the search firm that you would, yes, if you, I would only be hired interim if they, if they, if they didn't want, if they didn't want the job full time, if they, they agree not to get candidate, if they if they want if they want to, I, I want somebody that's going to be independent. I don't want somebody that's going to try to mold things or say the right things because they think that we're going to hire them. I need somebody to be independent. I agree. We've all heard it. Yes. I'm sorry, we've all heard it from all the different officers over the years. And again, I'm not saying anything ill of the current administration. I'm not. I'm just saying that there's been enough things that have gone on. There's been enough turnover. I think it's warranted. To investigate what's going on and so i want that to be an independent person and i like i said they don't want the job they're at the top of the list they want the job not i'm not really keen on recommending them to the village board that that, that person to the board Ready? but go no go ahead no keep going keep going but like the uh timeline three months i was thinking my gut was no more than six but i think six is dragging it out okay. And so I would say, well, think of this, though. You've got a whole police force that's used to what is going on now. You're going to bring in an outsider. So for two months, the people over there ain't going to give that outsider the time of day. It's going to take some time for them to feel comfortable enough. Well, I think, that I, don't you think? I, I just, I would think that I disagree only for the fact that it would be completely on the outside and they're all going to be a part of the process. That's the big thing, is that. 
I would go on a quote unquote PR tour if I had to, right? If that's what it took and explain to everybody about the reasons why, and this is why I need you to be a part of this so that we can decide this because we're all going to be a part of this, right? I'd like the board to be a part of this. I don't want it to be just me picking a person and presenting that person to you guys and say, this is why I want to hire this person. We were chosen by this community to lead us. And we all represent each one of us and have different opinions. We all represent people a little bit different. And so that's why I feel that we all need to have skin in this game. Well, let's ask Mr. Hedges. You went through the process. Do you think six bucks uh, it would give the existing police force enough time to feel comfortable around the guy to maybe open up, maybe show what's going on? No, if they're going to hold back like that, then they're just being counterproductive, then they're not being team players. So I don't expect that. And Mike, I don't think you'll have to do that because I will. Um, we need to communicate with whoever this person is. He, he will be running the department. I'm not going to interfere with how he manages the department. I'm not going to be talking to his employees, and I don't think he should either, Mike, while he's managing. Um, but I, I think three months is enough. Okay. I, I wouldn't want to have interim unless we really struggle to find somebody. Now, that's, that may be difficult. You know, it's, this is both, great, both this only great resignation, and now we're part of it officially. Um, but I think you know, both got, firms did tell us that it's harder right now to find a police chief than it was even four years ago. Actually, what she told us was interesting. The hardest one to find is building department. Second hardest is finance director, and third hardest is police chief. Right now, yeah. years ago, years ago, it was real easy. You put up a job posting, and then somebody would come, and they'd be qualified, and that would be it. But now it's we're struggling to. Yeah. Nobody wants to be a police officer. Right? No, and I mean, I and I came from law enforcement, where yeah. I mean, you, you max out, you get your pension, and you get to a point where you're not going to be making any more. It's best to just start get out at that point and start a second pension. It's the Illinois way, and you've got two or three of them. So you've got a lot of people that are chiefs. They resign from one. Each of the pension systems are different, so it's an opportunity for them to continue because if they get 20, 25 years and they started at 18, you know, they're really young at that point. And I know. So, I know. <laughs> but, I mean, so that's a little bit of the history of it, but therefore you could get somebody who was already a lieutenant or a deputy chief who's, you know, 45, 50 years old, who then switches to a different department and can bring that history with them. And they're not, I mean, not necessarily that I need a huge amount of money either, although they probably take it anyway, um, but they're already getting that pension. So I guess I, I don't need a, a vote or action item on this, but I felt that it was prudent to bring it to the budget committee based on the fact that it would be an unbudgeted expense. This expense would come out of reserves as these types of expenses typically would. It's an unbudgeted expense, but that's what the reserves are for at this point. And I just don't feel that we should, I don't wanna say we, we cut any corners. We need to get this right. Like we needed to get hiring the right person to be the village manager. We need to get it right. The, the amount, bringing it back to the, the budget perspective here then. So you're saying then it's about $9,000 a month. On the high side. On the high side, plus 10% of that, so about $900 or so that goes to the firm for each month. And then it, then the actual search itself is about $23,000. We haven't negotiated anything. And so tomorrow I have a phone call with the one firm I really like. The Illinois Chiefs of Police, I, I like them and what they stand for, but it seems like it's not... Their search is in, is in depth. They don't offer as much as much opportunity for us to have input. It's basically they run a nationwide search and they or, or regional regional maybe not nationwide regional search, and they present they vet the individual candidates and then they present you candidates as if you know here's who's available. Here they give you three. If they wash it out, then you start over and you pay them again. Okay. And then the the, the other firm is more in depth, but they also are the ones that. I want to get into the police department. I want to. I want to hear what the our force is saying. I want to. I want. I want them to be able to interview and interface with the board and figure out what they what their thought processes are on the position. This, this twenty three thousand to do the search. How long does that? It would depend on the amount of candidates. I mean. It, I mean. So realistically, that's the benefit of like we could start the search tomorrow if we had no intention of bringing in an interim uh, chief, and then we'd have to accelerate it, and hopefully we'd find somebody by September 9th. 
But at the end of the day, if we bring in the interim that buys us a little time, we get the we get the information that we want about the current state of our department, and then conduct a search. And then hopefully within that three month time span, by the time that you could, you know, that's what we agreed to, month three ends, new guy comes in, new guy, new person comes in, and that's it. Just to clarify a little bit, Mike. Um, so first of all, you don't have to commit to a certain number of months on the interim. Correct. Be month to month. Correct. So three months might be the target, but if we find somebody after two months, that's fine. But should we months. tell whoever we hire that their expectation will be three months? Yeah. My, yeah. Suggest, my suggestion would be that we do both right away, and that's what we've talked about, Mike. And after you finish your conversation tomorrow, we also have a conference call tomorrow at 10. Um, then my suggestion would be it doesn't have to be this Thursday, but I would suggest by the next board meeting we go ahead with the full search and also the interim. It could take us several weeks to find an interim person. Um, and it, it, in my mind, this, this interim should end by the end of the year. Theoretically, I think it will end by the end, not necessarily should. I expect it to end by the end of the year. So we've got to we bring somebody on in we're August, August, say, even September 1st. We're already you know, in August. So if you bring somebody on in September, they're here for maybe even just a week with, with Brian if we get them here in time. Um, or or not, have him come right after he leaves. Um, but then you know we've got September, October, November, December. If we need it by that time, I think we should have we should know where we are with our search. We should be well underway with the search and have recommendations. And and I think we should make a select. I think they'll tell us tomorrow that it'll take two to three months. So is it going to? Is it too late to get it on the agenda for Thursday? No, there's a placeholder on the agenda for that. And so my thought process was was is after the phone call tomorrow. Where I'm at is I'm 90% into Gov HR is where I'm at. There and they're the 40%? There. Say again? They're the ones that are 40%? Yeah. But for the interim. For the interim. But they're also the ones that are offering the more robust search and the more of the availability to interface with our staff this year. And so I want, and, and I just, again, this is not a knock against Jay or our, our staff here. I want this to be an independent thing. I don't want Jay involved with the search part of it. I mean, they, they will interview him, you know, just like they'll interview the rest of the staff. But I, I want him to be just like Ken was, where he was completely independent and directly reporting directly back to us. And again, this is not a knock against you at all. We just, that was the way that we did it with you, and it worked out really well. And that's what we're looking to do this time. Jay's helped facilitate some of the, the, the phone calls and uh, a lot of the paperwork side of things with. Comparing the two, we've kind of shared notes because I trust his guidance on a lot of this stuff. But at the end of the day, because he at the beginning, he had even offered that we could do it internal and he would help with uh, interviews and that kind of stuff. And it's just like we did that once and it was terrible. No offense. No, and by the way, I, I said we could, but I don't recommend it because policing has changed so much just in the last year. It's evolving every day. And, uh, you know, I just came back to this business after being out of it for 30 years. So I, I don't want to pretend to be an expert after just two years. So when we speak about it on Thursday, again, I'm not looking for any action items tonight. I just, it's an unbudgeted expense, so I want you to be aware of it. And then I appreciate any support you could give. We, we, we should look at some kind of action Thursday. Well, I would agree with that. Yeah. That's why we put it on the agenda, and that's why, right. well, that's why I wanted to talk about it tonight. I, did, I, I understand that I'm going to shock half the board with the $23,000 and the $10,000 and the $10, or $9,000. It's the freaking chief of police. This is, this is, this is the, you have to the garbage it. collector. Yeah. No, I, I understand. You know, you guys know how I am with I like presenting information so you have stuff to chew on before it's just surprise. You know, I want to sign a contract tonight with no background, you know. Um, if it just bringing it back to the budget figures, and I know it's all coming out of reserves, but if we're looking at about 11000 for a interim chief and the what do we call that? What do we call that? Finder steer. But Laura, you got to remember now the eleven thousand. That's uh, uh, we're not paying Brian anymore, so that his right the, that guy's wages will be the same as Brian's. So it'll offset That's each other. That's exactly where I'm going with that because then where are we at with the monthly salary and we haven't this? finished negotiating, so we don't have the exact numbers yet. Okay. But I mean, when we know, you know, approximately though, I mean, are we in the same ballpark with the, with the chief salary? Little, I think we'll, with GovHR, we'll spend a little more per month than what we're paying Brian for the okay. interim for two or three months. Okay. And that we'll includes spend, their fee though. Yeah. And then we'll spend 23, yes, including their okay. fee. And then we'll spend $23,000 on the search, which is a defined amount. There's no, okay. no flexibility in that. That's a firm amount. 
Okay, so then really we're just kind of having someone step into what the salary would have been for the chief, plus just a little bit more than for, for the, their fee, and then 23,000 right. per certain. And then 23, so I mean, so it's really not that big of an ex. No, I mean, no, it's a lot of a bigger but it's expense. But it's $23,000 expense, so maybe a couple thousand dollars and a, a month. Yeah. Jay, Jay and I have spent the last week beating this to death. And so now we're, we did it this way. We, we did it this way for a reason so that we could have something to vote on on Thursday. And so if all the, if everything comes together like it should, I expect that I will present, be presenting a contract. And it, as soon as we have that phone call and let's say it goes well, we will send out the paperwork on GovHR so you guys can see what it all entails and all that kind of stuff. It probably won't make it into the packet. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. It probably won't make it into the packet, but you guys will have the information to review prior to the meeting on Thursday. Is the board going to have to vote on the interim chief? Absolutely. Absolutely, because you can not sure about that. Mike. Because, well, sure it's an appointment. Unless you, want, unless you firmly want them to, unless it's not required. We'll look into it, but I, my gut feeling is my gut feeling is it's an appointment, so you guys would have to vote on it. Well, I mean, to get to a point, mm -hmm. if he's here, we're not talking. We're all not going to say, ah, oh, we don't like you. Get somebody else. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I understand. I want to fight for a facade, Grant. Yeah, we want to go for a for you. I, I, can, well, I, I know I'm allowed to make an emergency appointment for 30 days. I, don't, I know I'm allowed to make an emergency appointment for 30 days. I don't know how that is for interim, but like, if I think I could reappoint a person every month if that's what it, if that's what it is. Or I could bring it, and I, I could, I probably, I think, I'm not the lawyer, but I think I could just bring it to the board and we appoint an interim chief, and that's but it. This way sounds pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I don't care. I just I wanted to bring it up. So okay. thanks for allowing me to do that. We appreciate appreciate that then. So there will be no action by the budget committee for this particular um, topic. Um, any other announcements? Anything? Then I entertain a motion. So moved. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jake. All, all those in favor? Aye. Do you have any ties okay. to the old air compressor industry? And a little bit. seven. Oh, Enough where you could maybe uh, seven, help the 